In my silent compressor video, although I was able to replace one of my motors, the check valve was shot and I had to put a temporary solution together, which consisted of a PVC check valve and some threaded pipe fittings. What I wasn't able to install at the time was the unloader valve portion. Well, the new check valve arrived and now I can plumb the rest. Doesn't it suck when the exact one you need to confirm is busted? You know what sucks even more? Is when they don't have what you need in stock. This little piece right here was definitely worth the hassle. The importance of the unloader valve is to prevent the reed valves from breaking by removing the pressure after the compressor has stopped cycling. If you're not quite sure how a compressor works, here's a diagram for you. Every time the piston cycles upwards, it forces air past the reed valve and into the head. Every time the piston cycles down, it draws fresh air into the cylinder. So once the compressor reaches max pressure and shuts down, the residual pressure remaining between the compressor motor and the tank has nowhere to go except applying back pressure down on the reed valves, potentially breaking the valves themselves. Since I couldn't afford to have the compressor down, my temporary PVC backup was in play. As you can see, it has no provisions for an unloader valve. So this is where the excess pressure accumulates after the motor shuts down. Special thanks to Atomizer for reminding me of the importance of having this valve installed. Now that you understand the potential problem of not having an unloader valve installed, here's how it works. Once we have an open port to connect the line between the head of the compressor, but before the pressure tank in place, it needs to connect to the pressure switch. The pressure switch has provisions to mount it off to the side where there's a mechanical lever. This lever is triggered by the pressure switch once max pressure is achieved. This lever will actually press down on the needle of the valve, allowing all the air to escape and evacuate all remaining pressure between the head and the tank. Basically, it's a Schrader valve, much like on a bicycle tire or a car. Here's what was needed in order to replace the old PVC backup valve. First, drain the tank completely. Then, disassemble the pressure outlet lines coming off the compressor. And then for me, I had to rotate my pressure gauge for the tank 90 degrees just so I could have clearance to remove the valve itself. Doesn't it always seem like when you're making your own design, there's always that one detail that you overlooked? I guess that's a small price to pay when you DIY things using off-the-shelf products and trying to keep it on a budget. Now that we got the valve out, we just need to do a quick cleanup so we can get the new check valve installed. There's one tricky part to doing the installation with this check valve, and it is to tighten it down enough to where it doesn't leak and making sure you have access to the outlet port for the unloader valve. Now I need to install the 1 8 inch MPT to quarter inch compression adapter so I can be able to connect the unloader valve tube. Here's the tip. I definitely recommend when building a silent compressor of your own to utilize some compression fittings. It's good to be able to have sections where you can disconnect in the case you need to access and conduct some maintenance or replace the part if required. Another reason you might want to consider using compression fittings. Compression fittings do not require any soldering and just take a minute to align and set up. Then all you have to do is snug them down just enough to compress the bushings to create your seal. Okay, where were we? It looks like I'm almost done. I hand tightened both the pressure lines coming off the compressor so I can get a feel of the layout. Then I sized them up cut and prepare the pressure line from the compressor to the check valve. Now it looks like I'm ready for final assembly. All that's left is to position, set, and tighten up the compression fittings. Then I can move on to making the unloader valve line. Okay, here's the tip for you. Remember when you're tightening the compression fittings just to snug them down. The last thing you want to do is over torque them. 
By over-torquing the fittings, you risk crushing the brass bushings to the point of where you actually create a leak. I don't know about you, but for me, I find it's just easier to go back and tighten up any connections that are leaking a little at a time, rather than throwing away a couple hours worth of hard work. Quick tip for compression fittings, Lowe's has a much larger selection. At Lowe's, I actually found these brass bushings that they sell a la carte, and I wasn't planning on using them. But I bought them anyways because I figured I could return them. Instead, I actually bought a brand new compression nut fitting, and I was going to use that with the old fitting that I had, but it didn't want to match up well. So, as you can see, I decided to cut the old nut off and reuse it with the brand new bushing. Once I attached the unloader valve to the tube, I connected it to the pressure switch and started bending my line. And when you're bending these lines, you want to be careful not to overbend it because it's going to be difficult to straighten it back out. So again, less is more. Start slow. You know how they say hindsight is 2020? Well, there's a much easier way to do this. And as I'm watching this video, if I had to do it over again, I would definitely do it a different way. So the hot tip is what I would probably do is get a piece of Romex, get a strand of wire, solid copper wire out of the Romex, cut a long piece and do a mock-up. Now, if you're watching this video, like I'm watching this video, you're seeing me struggle trying to be very careful as I'm bending the lines. I'm working with a full two feet of copper tubing and I got to be very careful how I do it. I actually loosened up the fittings so I can actually get some play and I'm still having a lot of difficulty putting this together. Looks like my own video is teaching me something. So definitely don't do it this way. Get a solid piece of copper wire, bend it up, do the mock-up and build your line off of the compressor. Then when you come to fit, it should be perfect first time out. In my silent compressor video, I explain why I'm using a zip tie to keep this drain plug closed. After testing, it turns out I still do not have the capacity to pressurize this chamber. Okay, what I'm doing here is using a spray bottle to check all my joints and connections to make sure if I got a leak. And as you've seen, there was just a tiny bubble there. So there was a small leak there. I went over all the fittings, retightened them, checked them until everything was leak free. Now that everything checked out okay, there was just one more thing to do, which was the whole point of this video checking the unloader valve and making sure that it was operating correctly. As soon as the compressor tops off at 90 PSI, we'll find out whether or not it works. Don't forget to like and subscribe because we're just getting started.